Cinity, your digital cinema tech resource, supported by B and H and CVP. Hi everybody! Welcome to our second lab test video with Dr. Gunter Machu. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine, thanks. Well, the first time we did this a couple weeks, months ago, was mm -hmm. with the uh, about the Alexa 35. As you all know, we've been having our lab tests, our standardized lab tests of cinema cameras and any kind of video capable cameras for many years on the site now and we've decided to add something which is a more casual conversation about those results but these very technical results of the same exact test that mm -hmm. Gunther runs with every camera that we do. The first time we did this was about the Alexa 35. If you missed that click the link above uh, to see that video it was very very popular also. A lot of people have been waiting for this test and a lot of people of course have been asking us what about the competition, what about RED, what about the RED V Raptor? Um, yes and finally, finally, apologies that it took us this long, we also tested the RED V Raptor. Why did it take us this long? Well honestly you know just a lack of time. Mm -hmm. um, there was, it was definitely missing from our tests. Uh, the V-Raptor is a full-frame camera, mm -hmm. so it's different from the Alexa 35, which is a Super 35 camera, but it is their top model. I mean, now there is also a V-Raptor XL, which is the same technology in the larger body. So we're probably not going to do a lab test on the XL, are we? Let's see. Let's see, Let's but see. Uh, it's, you know, it's supposed to be the same camera, um, the same sensor. Um, but yeah, it was really time that we did this test. So uh, thanks for your patience. Also, when you watch this video, there is an article, a very extensive lab test article from Gunther about uh, the V Rapture lab test, of course. And we have also added the results of the lab test to our Cinedy uh, camera database, which is our extensive database about all kinds of technical data of cameras, specifically the lab test results, also recording modes and times, which is something that is extremely extensive with RED cameras because the combination of um, uh, frame rate, resolution, frame resolution rate, yeah, crop everything. factor mm -hmm. is insane. I think Florian uh, said that who does our uh, who fills the database with the mm. results <laughs> said that there are about 4,000 combinations. So it took him a long time to put all of that <laughs> into the databases mm -hmm. directly from the camera, not from a spec sheet. So you can see that on our uh, databases. But without further ado, let's talk about the results you got from the lab test of the V-Raptor. So let's yes, start sure. with, I guess, the rolling shutter results, right? Yes, uh, maybe some words up front. Yes, I did not test all the 4,000 combinations of you know, frame rates and resolutions. So I apologize for that. I focused on the most prominent resolution, which is 8K for this full frame uh, sensor. And yeah, I know I also want to give my apologize. We, you have been waiting for this quite for a while, but also a lot of you have asked for the V-Raptor and finally we got one. And uh, so let's start with the lab tests. I think the sensor specs are quite astonishing. It, has, it offers 8K with 120 frames per second. That gave us already a good indication of what the rolling shutter values should be order of magnitude wise, because if you have 120 frames per second, rolling shutter should be in the area of about 8 milliseconds. And yes, indeed it was. Here is uh, the display that we always show with the sequence of white and black bars. And we measured exactly 8 milliseconds for 8K. We measured 6 milliseconds for 6K and 4 milliseconds for 4K. So that is easy to remember, right? And that is a really good result. That is a really good result. It's among uh, the best we have measured so far. For comparison, the ARRI Mini LF has 7.4 milliseconds in full frame mode. But the leader of the pack is the Sony Venice 2, which showed less than 3 milliseconds for 8K full frame readout mode. Actually 8.6K, sorry for that. Of course, I mean, most of you will know, but why does this matter? Rolling <coughs> shutter is something that we have to live with with CMOS cameras. They are, most all, almost all of them are uh, read out sequentially, line by line from top to bottom, which means if you have very fast movement in your shot or fast camera movement, you might see those bent lines. Specifically, you see that on a lot of lower end uh, mirrorless cameras that are probably optimized for photography rather than cinematography. And uh, yeah, the professional filmmaking devices, the professional video cameras, high-end stuff, this should be as low as possible. But it is something that exists mm -hmm. even in the top models, as we see in this exactly. case, also with RED and ARRI, it's something normal. 
something that we've come to live with. It's not something that actually is a huge problem in practical terms for most shoots. But there are sometimes these shots when you have to deal with strobe lights or, you know, mm -hmm. a fast exactly. train crossing your image, you will face this problem. Yeah. yeah, so eight milliseconds is superb. I mean, of course, RED offers the RED Komodo, which has a global shutter. So with that sensor technology, all the uh, issues are gone and you have no rolling shutter any longer, which is great. But it usually comes at an expense of a little bit of um, dynamic uh, sensitivity range, or dynamic yes. range. Yes, yeah. exactly. It does. And you see also we have a red Komodo lab test also in our database and an article on that. Have a look for that as well. And you Link can see is here. Difference. Yes, <laughs> correct. Yeah, there is a difference. So there are not many global shutter cameras out no, there. No. Uh, red has one of them, which is great. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. specifically good for the Komodo because it is a small handheld camera where this is more relevant, right? Um, Absolutely. And I think Absolutely. Sony only had the F55, which yes, is correct. probably discontinued. Yes. So there's no other Sony camera that has no a global shutter anymore. No other choice. Has a global shutter anymore, yeah. All right, so good result. Let's, mm -hmm. Should we move on to the, to the dynamic range test? Sure, sure. You know, uh, when we do the dynamic range test, we always use the Xyla 21 uh, chart, which you see it also here in the background. Uh, it contains, it has 21 patches of dynamic range. Uh, and we shoot the chart, uh, we look at the image, we look at the waveform plot of the chart. That's the first thing we always look at. And we try to identify, uh, we always clip the first patch, then the second patch is at the cusp of clipping, and then we count from the second patch, which is not clipped, but at the cusp of clipping, we count the number of stops that we see above the noise floor. And this is the first visual indication of the dynamic range of a sensor. And let me display the result now. You can see 13 stops. So, so um, what I'm seeing here, it's I can see a 14th stop. Isn't there a 14th stop? Actually, yes. Uh, well spotted. Uh, I did not count the second stop or patch from the left. Why is that? Uh, basically because there's something inherent in the IPP2 color pipeline of red cameras. Uh, they are using highlight recovery. And highlight recovery means that as soon as one of the RGB, the red, green and blue channel clips, uh, you can still, based on the information from the other non-clipped channels, you can reconstruct at least the lumen value of that stop. But the problem with that is that you don't get accurate color information any longer and that's why red also reduces the saturation of the reconstructed stop, meaning you lose all the color information. Do, and do we have an example for this? Yes, you will see in the uh, latitude section, we are going to quickly show you this now. You can see we exposed Nino's face exactly in the area of the reconstructed uh, stop. And as you can see, there are details in Nino's face, but all the color information is gone. It looks clipped, obviously. Now, coming back to our waveform, I will show you now uh, a waveform with expanded RGB values. You can see it now. And in that, you can see also that the second stop from the left lacks all color information. There are no RGB uh, signals any longer seen and that means we can only start to count the stops with real color information from the third patch onwards and so that's what i did to simplify this so let's say so one of the rgb channels is clipped mm -hmm. the camera of course therefore doesn't have correct color information anymore correct. because it doesn't know what the color is mm -hmm. if it's ex overexposed correct so it reduces the luma value no actually it tries to reconstruct at least the luma signal okay from the not clipped RGB, All right. the other ones. But then it loses, of course, the it doesn't know the color because it doesn't know the color. Exactly. It can't reconstruct the color based exactly. on two channels. Exactly. It okay, so that's why it's the, it's the camera desaturates that. Exactly. And that's why it, it's in this case, I mean, we have to say this is an extreme case, right? Mm -hmm. you, wouldn't, you wouldn't expose a face like that. Of course. But it is something that red engineers I'm just assuming here, probably thought is fine because this is usually what happens when you point the camera at something with a very bright source. Mm -hmm. So for example, the sun, mm -hmm. any practical light, mm -hmm. any... Um, or for instance, the sky. Sometimes the sky, you clip yeah. some, you clip Even if it's, a, if it's a, like a bit a of a cloudy sky. day or something. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And it doesn't matter because you don't really yes. need the, the color there. It's white, gray anyway. Correct. 
Correct. So it wouldn't actually show up. It would still look nice, actually, exactly. because you have that one exactly. stop reconstructed exactly. there. Exactly. But you're not counting it because it is not an actual full stop that the camera is recording. Exactly. It's something that it's there's a bit of a, a bit of a scientific trickery going on, which is fine. Yeah. But it's not fine comp when we compare apples to apples, which we Absolutely. try to do here, right? Absolutely. So we only count in the, for the lab test the full stops where all the color information is still there. And we did this for all the other cameras as well. For instance, black magic cameras offer also highlight reconstruction, highlight recovery as it is called, in post in DaVinci Resolve. You can tick an option there. Uh, and it's up to you if you want to have it or not. The red cameras have it built in in the IPP2 color pipeline, which is fine. It's a great thing to have. But you can't switch it off. No, you cannot switch it off, but uh, the red, uh, all the red cameras have this nice traffic light exposure uh, tool, which shows you basically traffic light for the red, green and blue channel. And it uses the raw, native raw sensor data for that. Meaning you can very easily identify if you are ready in the highlight recovery region or not. If okay. all the color so you are able to see that while you're Absolutely. shooting. Absolutely. Yeah, you can see that while shooting. That's all great. And it has this additional room, if you want, built in, which is great, but we don't count it, to be fair, with all the other cameras. Okay, so it's actually a cool feature. Absolutely. But if you compare this, and we have to compare, when we say apples to apples, we have to compare a full-frame camera to a full-frame camera. Absolutely. Now, we know that the Alexa 35 had an exceptional result, mm -hmm. but it is a Super 35 camera, yes, which is a significantly smaller sensor. So yes. we should probably compare this more to the Mini LF. Exactly. How does it compare to the Mini LF? Yeah, to the Mini LF, uh, you can see 14 stops above the noise floor, 14 stops without highlight recovery. No? So 14 stops where the full color information is still there. So that leads me also looking at the waveform to the first result that the red V Raptor is about one stop below uh, the Ari Mini LF. But we also have to say this one stop above the best consumer full-frame cameras that we have tested so far, like the S1H from Panasonic or the Canon R5C and so on. So it sits right in the middle or right in between those. Yeah, and the next thing after the waveform we always do, we run the files from the Xyla 21 chart through Imatest and Imatest uh, calculates the noise based on the patches and calculates the signal to noise ratio. And what we got for the Red V Raptor are also very, very good results here. 13.4 stops at a signal-to-noise ratio of 2 and 14.9 stops for a signal-to-noise ratio of 1. Here's the result displayed in the video. What we have to say though, that Imatest of course cannot uh, identify this one stop as a highlight recovered stop, so it is also counting this one. And typically I know from my Blackmagic tests in the past where I have this option with highlight recovery on or off, I know that it typically leads to about one stop of a difference. So take that into account when looking at the Imatest results. How can you know it's one stop? I know I already know the people asking, how can you know it's just one stop or maybe it's less, more, maybe it's more? Yeah, I mean, if you look at the RGB waveform, uh, where I expanded the RGB channels, uh, you can see that this highlight recovered stop sits right between the clipped, totally clipped one, and the next one, which has all the RGB channels mm. intact. So it is about one stop. It's right see. in the middle. Okay. It's right in the middle there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we yeah. have to disqualify one stop essentially if we want to compare it to the yes. other cameras. Yes, more or less. Um, mm -hmm. And that's the way we have to put it in the databases also. So it's. Yeah, it will be confusing for the readers. Uh, maybe we put a comment uh, yeah. in the comments field there. We leave the original result, but we could put a comment field in there okay. about that. Great. Yeah, and the third thing we always do, because uh, of course you can say, yeah, this is Imatest, this is a chart, nobody shoots a chart, uh, which is right, only I do it. <laughs> <laughs> so we always have a CineD. You have the most boring uh, stock yes, footage yeah. at home. Yes, like everything is just yes. this chart. Yeah. Yes, nobody wants my stock footage, I'm sorry <laughs> for that. <laughs> no, what we also do is the third thing is always the latitude test, because the latitude test in our standard CineD studio scene gives a very good impression also how far you can push a camera. It's a torture test. I know nobody would expose like that in the real world, but it also correlates very nicely with the dynamic range results. Because typically, let's say we talked before about consumer full-frame cameras that show about 12 stops in the waveform and in the IMA test. Those cameras also exhibit about eight stops of exposure latitudes. The RE Mini LF, 
we talked about already uh, shows about two stops more in the waveform and in the IMA test and it also shows two stops more latitude, 10 stops. So it correlates very nicely, so we always do this as well and it also gives a good impression how well the whole uh, sensor and signal processing pipeline works and how good the codec is in preserving all the details. And here I can say we did all the tests here with the red code RAW HQ. Again, it's a fantastic codec. Uh, it keeps image detail uh, in a perfect way and that also shows in the latitude results. I can show you now the sequence, uh, how we do this. We use a base exposure level of 60% luma value on the forehead of our subject, that's important. Yeah. So we, our exposure base reference is always the forehead of our subject, meaning Nino's face in this case. And we start from this base exposure level that was arbitrarily chosen by us to 60%. We overexpose by opening up the iris and then we underexpose by closing the iris and additionally uh, using lower shutter angle values. And having a look at the sequence you just saw, we successively underexpose from th three stops overexposure to base exposure to nine stops of underexposure to see the full spectrum. And here you can again see uh, the one thing we uh, discussed before already, at three stops above 60%, we are already in the region of the highlight recovery all the details are gone in Nino's face. And then we can go as far as six stops below without any significant noise, which leads to eight stops of exposure latitude. And this is where most of the cameras fall apart, like the Sony Venice 2 even, for a full frame cinema camera, falls apart at eight stops of exposure latitude, not the red V-Raptor. Still looks really nice. Uh, almost no need, in my opinion, to do noise reduction, but here you can also see an image with noise reduction applied looks very clean and good. Then we move to seven stops of underexposure, which gives us nine stops of exposure latitude. Noise reduction can very nicely clean up this image again, but you see already in the darker areas that the image details get corrupted. And now if we were able to push it one stop more, we would be on the level of the Ari Mini LF at 10 stops. That uh, would mean eight stops of underexposure with the red V-Raptor. But here you can see this is the shot. You can see noise is already corrupting the image to a huge extent and even noise reduction cannot completely eliminate it. Uh, here are also the noise reduction settings in DaVinci Resolve 18. Uh, you can see, in my opinion, it's not usable anymore. It also has a rather strong pink uh, cast. The whole image turns brownish. Uh, so we have reached the limits. So we can say nine stops of exposure latitude for the Red V Raptor with some wiggle room towards 10, because it still looks surprisingly good compared to other cameras. So great. that's a really great result for the Red V Raptor. Again, I mean, that's really interesting. Uh, w one thing we have to add, of course, the, th the three things we test are things we pick because those are things that we can repeat with every camera. Mm -hmm. There's a million other things that are impossible to compare uh, if we talk about uh, usability, if we talk about sure. um, you know, other things that are built into the camera, uh, the size of the camera, big, mm -hmm. big factor actually. Mm -hmm. The yeah. V-Raptor is a tiny, tiny full frame camera compared mm -hmm. to a Venice 2, compared to even the Aries. Yes. I mean, like uh, yes. even the, the mini LF is not so mini compared to mm -hmm. the V-Raptor, right? Correct. I mean, that's, Correct. You know, that, that, that's a huge advantage of having a smaller camera, of course. Definitely. So Also the frame rate options, the resolution options. Resolution, I mean, wow. 8K. 8K. Uh, unheard of from, from Ari, yeah. So yeah. that's definitely, that's one of the mo most things, like the people who shoot on red, they usually want and use that resolution. So that's really something that has to be pointed out also. And it's something that's simply not reflected in our lab test simply because, yeah, it's, you know, it's not practical to do that. Yet we, we might come up with ways of comparing other factors uh, between those cameras in the future, which will create a lot of work because we will have to go back and test mm -hmm. all those cameras again. But, you know, it's not there yet, so, or it's not there now. So just please keep that in mind. Also, uh, one big factor is, of course, price. Yes, I was going to mention that. Price f difference. So, um, how much is a V Raptor right now? Yeah, roughly? it's like the bare naked body is about twenty five grand. Okay, twenty five thousand yes. dollars. And then uh, compare that to uh, our Mini LF, which is like fifty six thousand. And the okay, Sony so Venice Two is on the same order of magnitude. No? So it's like twice the price. 
Yes. And you said that there is roughly one stop difference in Correct. practically Correct. usable yes. dynamic yes. range. I mean, so if you compare it to the Sony Venice 2, it's actually better than the Sony Venice 2. If you compare it to a mini LF from Ari, it's one stop less, but it's also half the price. I mean, yeah. you and that's a great package. So you can, get, you can get two reds for, yes, that. So for that. So that's just something to keep in mind. So, you know, Absolutely. like we know that red, like others, like other camera manufacturers, has a big fan base. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like people act sometimes defensively when they hear mm -hmm. results from their camera and they don't correlate 100% with what the manufacturer claims. We get that. It's a, it's a buyer bias, right? Yes. Like I, I, I mentioned this in the last video, mm -hmm. like when I bought the FX9, which is actually standing back there, and then our FX9 results weren't what I expected, you know, like, um, of course it's like, okay, I just spent 10,000 euros on the camera, which doesn't perform as I expected it to perform in the lab test. So, but what can I do? You know, like in science, it's always the same test. By the mm -hmm. way, of course, we don't put this Xyla chart in this studio. There is a completely 100% darkened room, always the same spot, always the same distance to the camera, all the same everything. So we can actually be sure that those results are the same. But anyway, you know, there is something like a buyer bias. I hope even if you own a RED camera, you will uh, understand that the results and the tests that we run are 100% unbiased. It's always the same kind of thing. And um, actually, considering all the factors we just mentioned, the result is remarkable. It's mm -hmm. really, really good. And I think yeah. one of the huge things that are still, apart from the resolution some, and the size, the small size of the camera, something that speaks for RED cameras is the RED RAW codec. Absolutely. Which is something that yeah. completely sets it apart yes. from a lot of the yes. competition still. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. All right. All right, fine. That's Anything it. else to add? Yeah, maybe one last thing. Uh, if you want to know what the absolute benchmark is for our dynamic range, it is the Alexa 35 that we recently tested. And this camera shows 16 stops above the noise floor. So that's three stops more than the red V-Raptor. Yeah. I so hope that doesn't spoil the good uh, <laughs> spirit that we just had. But just to put things into perspective, yeah. uh, tech moves on as always. And uh, if tech moves as fast as it does, we'll probably have to find another setup for our lab test. So far, it's still fine. We can use our standardized test setup for because all the Because we actually like reached the limits. Uh, yes. With the Alexa 35, we reached already. We were close to the limits of our setup. We'll see. I'm sure other manufacturers will mm. not be asleep at the wheel and also bring out new sensors that will actually exceed current results. Of course, technology is always moving forward. So let's see how to continue this in the future. Thank you, Gunther. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for all the wor hard work on this. And uh, yeah, Happy to do so. look forward to the next results. We have a lot more cameras that are currently in backlog actually being tested uh, that will be released soon. Thanks everybody for watching. Stay tuned to CineD for a lot more videos like this one. Check out the Alexa 35 lab test video if you haven't seen it yet and all our other reviews and gear news videos. And please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.